You return to the wagon after you and your fellow exiles prevail against the withdrawn, and find Volfred waiting for you there. Not a us. Well done. Well done there, my girl. You are serving your companions well. Now then, I've something I wish to share with you, if you have a moment. What? We discussed the plan, of which we're all a part. I have a means of measuring our progress towards the goal of it. I'd like you to have a look at it. First, let's determine where the rites might take us next. Okay. Look forth. I expect you shall again see several shining stars, where once you saw but one. Alright, let's take a look. Several shining stars, a trick of the eye, or the will of the scribes, who can say? I, too, once gained this pro new profound vision many years ago, following my first liberation rite, and I believe only we of the Nightwings have this gift. I realize that in choosing whom the Nightwings confront in each rite, we in turn influence with triumphant we face when the time comes for someone to be set free. The object I invite you to use contains further detail. You may use Volfer Prayer? Okay. Using Volfer Prayer, you may assess your progress towards your ultimate goal, as well as check the turn standings of where you stand besides your adversaries. Volfred shall keep this information up to date for the remainder of your quest. You may look over it now, or any time in the black wagon, or while searching the stars. Alright, so... Question, one invasion. Air four and four. So the essence. Prisoners of war whose hatred are triumphant events with corrupted opportunists who means the right for selfish gain. The flyers to the right. Um, oh, geez, the pirate hearts suck. Once known for a spirit carrying laughing stock, their rightful judges have given way to the ruthless as a spite. Prideful at having prevailed over all terms combined. Man, they're... The, the essence are, like, up there. Okay. I feel bad for them. I want them. So, we're about to have another brush with Tamitha. How she yet she spared me another moment of her time. She's here because of me, and I am because of her. Tamitha tells you more about your next adversary, her own blood sister. Tamitha Terran, a harp of the high wing remnants, raised from birth to excel in outwitting and outmaneuvering her enemies. She seems driven by her hatred of the common for the Commonwealth. After retreating to the mountains centuries ago, the Harps refused to join the Commonwealth, and those old tensions boiled over into raids, or skirmishes, or all-out war. Flight tacticians such as Tamitha gave the Highwing Remnants a swift and powerful military presence to this day, despite the Harps' small numbers. Once, she once hatched ambitious plans to overthrow the Commonwealth, breaching its defenses so her sisters could rain down until destruction. On the darkest night of the year, she led a daring infiltration mission deep into her enemy's lands, and it almost worked. However, she was betrayed by someone very close to her. Someone branded a Commonwealth sympathizer, Tamitha. Oh, I see. Tamitha was caught, clipped, and subsequently exiled as a prisoner of war, but being trapped within the downside only stroked her fury. I wound up, up in here not long after. Anyways, it's complicated. What happened between us? What I did, I did for her own good and that of our sisters. Though, I'm beginning to doubt that Tamitha will ever see it that way. We'll see, I suppose. And for now, I'd, I'd best try and catch what sleep I'm able to. Pleasant dreams then, darling. You bid a good night to Tamitha in turn. No time now to make flight preparations, though. Come morning, the black wagon will press on. You thought Ruki was trying to get your attention, but you realize his attention is fixated on somebody else. What about Spinodo? 
My af may, might I assist you with something there, Mr. Greentail? Huh? Ruki has not struck you as the sort to ever be at a loss for words, and yet... Oh. Uh, uh, no! 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 Um, um, I was just trying to see if maybe, uh... <laughs> Pamitha gives a laugh. Not in an unkind way. At ease, Ruki darling. You should know that I have no immediate plans to snatch you up and eat you for a snack, if that's your concern. <laughs> no! No, it's, it's just... I mean, I... Um... What is it then, hmm? Look, I got a really stupid question here. It's been bugging me as all. Well. It's just us curs. We don't have many run-ins with folk, with you folk. And so... <sighs> What's your real stupid question, Brookie darling? Okay, okay, here goes, here goes. Um, how come... How come... How come you always wear that hat? Really? That's your question? Pinmitha remains silent for a time. Then... This helm was given to me by my blood sister on the night of my first kill. She, re she reaches for the helm. Ricky Greentail, this helm means nothing to me now. I want you to keep it. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> <laughs> then Pamitha begins to laugh again. Come on, Ruki darling. You've got you have got to stop being so serious around me. I don't bite. Besides, you seem to make a decent enough team out here, I think. You're pretty quick. <laughs> Ruki laughs rather sheepishly. Alright, alright, you got me pretty good there, sister. So, uh the stuff you said about that hat then? So nonsense. Mostly. I just happen to like it. So you're saying I can't keep it? I get out of here before you, Mr. Greentail. It's all yours. It's a deal! He skitters off before Pathmita can respond. She simply shrugs at you and smiles. Alright, what we got? Oh, now they're six and two. No, oh, they've been six and two. We haven't lost anything. The accusers suck! Tempers have gone down. Alright, what we got in here? The withdrawn. The withdrawn did spawn forth from the witch, Milith, in whose vigilance is the pursuit of the darkest of the unknown and the unknowable. I always felt a certain kinship. Whether the withdrawn were Milith's kin by blood or merely worshippers, we trusted one another not to ask or care. What mattered was Milith chose the most audacious minds, who stopped at nothing short of impossible. Though ever distant, the withdrawn revealed to us such truths about the land which long laid hidden, even to one such as I. These knowledge ever waking into their knowledge ever waking into newfound depths of consciousness, they lead us all to better know ourselves. The Beyonders. Ah, I I guess. The nine triumphricates. Okay. Alright, nope. Alright. Yes, we're going. Boom, 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 boom. Take off. How do I do this? Where are we going? Alright, we're going up. I like the music. As you soar above the waters of Worm Gulf, you notice Silgilman sidle up to you very slowly. <laughs> we are very, 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 very high above the waters. If this knight is not mistaken, this knight's brethren work beneath the surface in numbers untold. Fortunately, if we were to come crashing to the surface now, then this knight, why he would receive a watery burial in the custom of his own kind. Thank you for letting me know about that, Sir Gilman. The Hulk of Oris. The Hulk of Oris. It has drifted here upon the sea for longer than one might expect. Perhaps you already read of the doomed ship demise in the embrace of the un uh, 
embrace of the unfounded pearl nets. Some say it was the sea itself which preserved the ship's remains. Hidden properties within the water, sea creatures binding together planks of wood. Those such as yourselves and the essence know another truth, I gather. The stars would not align over the wreckage if it not greater significance than it first appeared. May you have good fortune there during the coming raid. Sir Gilman thinks there are more restful currents. Let's start with Sir Gilman's. You touched down at the Sea of Solace, where you first encountered Sir Gilman and the Pyre Hearts. You shall soon carry. You shall. So you soon shall carry on by sea, but for now, though, you have some time to spare. Ah, it's Pamitha's time. Sea of Solace. Beyond the shallow, sickly gulf of our voyage grew increasingly forbidding and much harder to explain. How could a sea exist here, at the bottom of the world? We could not deduce whence when sprang the carcass of the ancient sailing ships we found throughout the Sea of Solace, though the warnings that they signif signified we duly noted. It was here we fir first met Orlais, the un called the Underking, who brazenly assaulted our small skiff for we had trespassed his waters. But then the Underking relented, for he witnessed Solomon Murr in all his doom and glory, and soon he would side with us. Then, with the other king, we sailed forth into the tempest beyond reasoning or measure. All right. I can, sense, I can sense you out there somewhere. What is it that you want? What's on your mind? You know, my lovely reader, I must admit that I did not expect your followers to be quite so receptive to instruction as thus far they have proved. I know not whether they owe it to you, owe it all to you, or have somewhat more to them than I first inclined to think. In any case, I am pleased that they are not entirely disgraceful. I like to keep my expectations well in check, seeing I have been thus expelled until the end of time. So, it is pleasant when those expectations are exceeded, every now and then. Although, I cannot quite recall when the last that was... But the best part of all this, of all of this, are the brief times in which you visit me in my domain. I know you cannot for long. This damn crystal in which I am thralled shall see to that. Though, as you have perhaps surmised, whenever it decides that one of your little fellows is worthwhile enough, why, I can offer them a trowel, and likewise, I can offer you a chat. Sometimes I think, as you achieve those trials of mine, perhaps it does something to trim the length of my eternal banishment. Eternal being what it is. However, perhaps not. Still, if the trophies of those blasted scribes are worth something to you, then all you need is to brave my trials, and then, and they can be yours, and perhaps there's a good in it for me as well. Then something in her changes, and she changes the subject. I've likely said too much. I am not to influence you in your use of the Beyonder Crystal. It is not there to be tampered with by anyone, including me. Forget what I said. Scribe! You need not ask me twice. Simply verify which one of yours shall be the subject of my scrutiny. Panetha. You asked Sandra to administer one of her special trials for Pamitha. Oh, you mean that feisty harp? She may, may yet be taught some matters, I should think. I shall attempt to bring her down to size. Let's bring her forth. Soon Pamitha arrives in the heat of the summons. You called for me, Reed darling? Ah, it's that crystal. Then let's hash it out. I'm ready. And Sandra appears and unfastens her mask. Listen well, Harp. You answer to me here. <laughs> oh, a boss of one. Sure, then. Go on, tell me more. Such a delightful student for a change. Come then, let's see what you can do. Left to your own devices, save your, for your reader's vigilance, of course. 
<laughs> Let's show her which what she wants to see then, reader darling. some time. Fuck! I don't like using wind creatures. Birdie bird 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 There now. Is anyone happy? No. Now there now. Is everyone happy? Oh, as happy as can be, my doubtless pretty harp. So good of you to ask. On top of that, your performance was sufficient and you passed my test. You have my congratulations to to both both to you and to your lovely reader. Now be gone from here before I have any second thoughts. Sandra's favorite. So does that mean you like me? I kind of want to free you too. I mean, you've been in here for 837 years. Ma, that Sandra could sure use a massage or something. So angry, isn't she? She's been stuck there for 300... No, sorry. Not 300 something. 337 years. Say, what you got there? Over th What's that you got there, darling? Ah, dressed as plume. Alright, let's see what this does. Uh... Oh, okay. That'd be interesting. Alright, let's get out of here. <laughs> Having arrived in the steady currents of Ragged Rock, you find yourself lost in thought, watching the horizon, then... Your vigil has ended for good! For the time, Master Reader. Please join the rest of its site. What? Okay. Sir Gilman leads you back to the wagon's cabin, where the others are waiting. Together, you share an entertaining conversation, a decent meal, courtesy of the lone minstrel who caught a fresh catch earlier. Hi! Enjoy your company. What's up, Sir Gilman? Sir Gilman is training intently when you approach. Master Reader! This knight was so engulfed in the memories of the Sea Dominion that he failed to detect or stealthy advance on his position. Splendidly done! This knight would have been vanquished by you easily! This knight is fortunate to have you as an ally rather than a mortal foe. His kind, routely clamor clamors. Oh, his kind, routinely clamors from the depths of the Sea Dominion to seek greater glory and perhaps a slightly longer life expectancy within your commonwealth. Such an honor would be to be assigned a rank of knight and to be conscripted onto the front lines of the commonwealth against the vicious winged enemies. In the Sea Dominion, it is our ultimate goal to fight our way to the surface, past our brethren, past the razor leaves, the strangle kelp, the snaggle fins that prey upon our kind. Sir Gilman continues listening undersea dangers and terrors for some time. Past the blood sniffers, the electric scallops, the rogue worms of the frigid current, the paralyzing nets of the fart fishers, and even past the scalding waters of the glowing trench. Finally, he trails off. 
Yet, even despite the myriad of cha challenges of living in the Sea Dominion, it is each would-be worm knight's duty to abandon that place at his or her own convenience. How humorous it was to learn that life within your common had a bit in common with our existence under sea. Twas not all pomp and glory, as the story is told. Perhaps it is our lot as worm knights to bring strife with us wherever we should go. For even here, it seems, is our kind pitted both against both our brethren and all others. He remains silent for a while, but then... Ah, uh, it is fortunate that this knight is found within this place as so fine a company as yours. It is a most different change of pace to strive toward a common purpose rather than strive constantly to outperform each other's towards one own self gain. Although, to the extent we are competing still, this knight shall ever strive to take the lead. Make no mistake of that, Master Reader. This knight was born to be the best there ever was. Just like the billions like him, now he is off to steal himself. You're part of Master Reader. Bye. He scoots off somewhere to continue his self-made tr training regimen. Hey. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's go. All right, so Gilman. As the steady currents of Sea of Solace, you encounter a messenger imp to deliver news and rumor from the other side. The news the news this time pertains to Hedwin, who you liberated at the fall of Solomon. You learned Hedwin returned safely to the Commonwealth, where he was clothed and welcomed his past transitions all forgiven. He was to be groomed for a leadership position of his choice, whether on the council or the blood border, the northern edge of the Commonwealth, each equally as lucrative and secretive as well. However, he refused before the stunned council members could do anything about it. He left them. He since made contact with Wilfred's agent and is working together with them. Thus, the ranks of the revolution grow stronger. Per the messenger imp's custom, the last part of the message was transcribed from Hedwin, word for word, saying, Keep going. I'll see you there. You thank the messenger imp for relaying this information. Soon your companions are all buzz about it. A glorious example Hedwin sets for all of us. He did it. I always thought Hedwin was some was looking for someone out there back home. Do you think he found her? Kiha! He's happy. Yeah, that's how it's done. Edwin, right behind you, chum. Wonder if you'll ever find the one he fell for. The news of Hedwin's liberation fills you and your fellow exiles with a newfound resolve. More hope! Wish Hedwin luck. It'll be fine. Oh, uh. Oh. Alright, what do we got here? A scribe's deeds. I wish to be remembered not for the boastfulness. Thus, I refrain from dealing. Detailing our exploits across the save the zones were numerous. Know that only through our combined strength of arms and wit did we withstand the savage on such were the monstrous dangers that is posed. I came to see that all the terrors which I had heard at bedside in my youth were based entirely in fact. So great they were, they blotted out the sky. Such was the evil that we vanquished, and the remnants, rem, rem, remnants of it yet shined under the stars. And in the end... It was the stars which guided us towards our truest calling. What was the other one? Mount Audio. Uh. Uh. Uh Okay, uh I I did, did. The Hulk of Oris. The Daz Raban was first of many river ships to vanish in the downside, although the presumption of its loss was 
were not inaccurate. The doomed ship and her valiant crew had chartered half the Sea of Solus ere the end of their brave journey. The sea titan, unfa unfathomed Pernus, was not fond of vesseling selling her sea, the s and split the doomed ship with a single swipe. The ship's own shadow prow would later end the sea titan's cruel reign, as the boast for Underking loves to recount. The stars themselves must have been moved by this. That point within the sea now sacred, as has the stars dancing in homage every now and then. Nope. We're good. Okay. Um. 